Hi everyone, my name is Steven Menahart, I'm the Operations Manager with Food Services Department. Uh, we are here to show today how to fully utilize a gallon of milk. We had this amazing concept come to us from Audrey Buma, who's a Creekside Elementary parent. I have two kids um, who go to Creekside here, and we've been getting the food bags, and we've been ending up with a lot of extra milk, because my kids don't really like to just drink it plain all the time, and when you end up with two gallons in a week, it's a lot, so we tried to figure out what to do with the milk. So we made some yogurt, and it was good, and then you have all this whey that comes with the yogurt, so we looked up what to do with the whey, and we figured out that we could make ricotta cheese with it. Hi everyone, so we're going to show two different methods today, one using the Instapot and then one using a stovetop method with an insulated thermos. So uh, both are amenable, they take about the same amount of time, so it's just a matter of preference and what equipment you have on hand. Uh, this is also a great uh, utilization method to use if you have milk that's about to expire um, or is near its expiration date, this is a great way to extend the life of the milk. I'm going to show the two different methods of heating the milk. The Instapot method, you want to have the lid off, importantly, and hit the saute button so you can get the milk heated up to an adequate temperature. On the stovetop method, which you could use a gas or electric stove, you're going to want to put it on medium heat. So as far as the heating step on the milk, again, we have our two methods, the Instapot and the stovetop but you're looking for very similar characteristics. So as soon as you see small bubbles appear at the edge of the pot, keep a close eye. Uh, once it comes to a rolling boil, so you see a lot of larger bubbles appearing in the center of the pot, either in the Instapot or the stovetop method, turn it off immediately. If you have a thermometer, basic kitchen thermometer, we're trying to get to approximately 200 degrees. So now is a very important step, which is the cooling step. We need to take this milk from approximately 200 degrees from its rolling boil down to a uh, gradient roughly between 100 and 110 degrees. So how do we do that? You can just let it sit and allow it some time. That will take some time. If you want to accelerate that process, you could put it in a refrigerator or in an ice bath. Again, if you have a thermometer, that's the best way to tell an accurate temperature reading of that 110 or 100 to 110 range. If you don't, just think of it as it needs to be slightly warmer than your body temperature. You could drip a little of the milk on your wrist like you would with a baby bottle and see it should be slightly warmer than your body top. All right, so now that our milk in our two pots is at that nice temperature range of approximately 100 to 110, it's time to add the yogurt starter to really make this start culturing into yogurt. So we have a small amount here of, you can just use any type of yogurt you'd buy at the grocery store or yogurt from a previous batch once you start doing this process. And we're going to add two tablespoons of yogurt starter per gallon of milk. So since we split our gallon, I'm going to add one tablespoon to each batch. And since the milk is still warmish, it should nicely fluidly mix in. So you could use a spatula, whisk, spoon, whatever you have available until you get a nice smooth consistency and you break up that yogurt. So it's already nicely mixed in. In the case of the Instapot, we're now going to securely put the lid on and close it. Press the yogurt button if you have it available. In the stovetop method, same concept. What we're going to do is take our warm milk, pour it through a funnel into any type of nice thermos that's going to keep the temp. Add this. Take the funnel away and securely close the thermos and keep this in a warm place for about eight hours. Now that we've waited our eight hours, we have our unstrained yogurt ready in both the thermos and Instapot. And the next simple process is you take a bowl, a colander, and a tea towel or cheesecloth. Place the cheesecloth over the colander. Pop your Instapot, add your yogurt. If you're using the thermos method, add your yogurt from the thermos. Allow this to strain in a refrigerator for four to eight hours. Now, four to eight hours later, we will unwrap the yogurt. It's strained off and we now have the yogurt and underneath it, the liquid whey. So depending on how long you let it strain, will determine the thickness of the yogurt. We've let this go for quite a while, so it's quite thick, like a Greek yogurt you'd buy at the store. I'm gonna add some of this nice, delicious Greek yogurt to our bowl. Now keep in mind, this is an unsweetened yogurt. It only has the milk sugars. So 
Many people do have a taste for sweeter yogurt, so we could add some sweet fruits, like the mango. We have some sliced strawberry. We're gonna add some granola, which also has its own sweetness to it. A bit of slivered almonds. It's just an idea. Of course, you're gonna let your kids experiment um, as they will. Just for an extra touch of sweetness and a nice look to it, we're gonna add a little drizzle of honey. And there is our delicious breakfast yogurt. So now that we've finished our yogurt process and enjoyed our delicious yogurt, we're now gonna show you what to do additionally to make ricotta out of the byproduct of the whey. So we'll take our yogurt that's strained, remove it. We're now left with this um, somewhat clear whey we're gonna to add to our pot here. And we'll now add about a half gallon of additional milk. Now the remaining step here is just to put it back on a medium heat and bring this back to a boil, rolling boil, just as before, either using a thermometer to help sense that 200 degrees or back to that visual rolling boil step. And when it comes to that temperature, you'll turn it off and let it set for 15 minutes. with the whey and then with the extra whey we've been making smoothies and bread and giving it to the chickens. It's been fun to just make new recipes and the kids like making different ricotta things um, just to lasagna or the shells filled with ricotta. The other night we made wontons filled with ricotta and then dipped them in red sauce. Um, it's just been fun and a good way to use everything and not have them go to waste.